Praise God, everybody, and welcome back to another time of study where we study God's Word and see how God's Word applies and line up in our lives. Amen. We pray that all is well with you and yours. We pray that you continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you. Amen. We know that God is, is a God, is a prayer hearing God. Amen. We continue to solicit your prayers, and we certainly pray for you. Let's do that now. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and we Thank you, Father God, for this blessed day that you have allowed for us to behold. We thank you for a reasonable portion of our health and strength that still remain. Father, there's so many things that you do for us through the course of the day. And just we just can't name them all. We know, Lord God, you provided protection for us as we travel down the dangerous roads. We lift up Sister Ball's son, Brother Jackie, who we pray, oh God, as his therapy and uh, begin to therapy for him, Lord God, we pray that all is well with him. I pray that you would spread to Sister Ball as well as she attend to his care. Not only him, but Sister Baker, Sister mm -hmm. Sister Ross, and also Sister Wynn family and others, Percy and Francis Hollingford. Mm -hmm. Pray for Sister Bull tonight as she mm -hmm. continued to have trouble with her foot. We pray, Lord God, you would touch her and heal her, Lord God, and just sprinting her mm -hmm. when she seemed to be weak. And Father, we come uh, again tonight, we ask that you give us clarity tonight, anoint our hearts and our minds and our, our, our lips so that we can teach your word tonight. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that you be lifted up and you continue to draw men to you, Lord God. If nothing we do by ourselves, but everything we do, we do it because you give us the strength to do it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 On last Wednesday night, uh, those of us, those of you who have tuned in with us and those of us here tonight, we dealt with continuing uh, for the faith last, last Wednesday night, and we brought our study from the book of Jude, amen, and I do believe that we accomplished what we set out to do by the Holy Spirit to uh, make us aware that so many things are happening in the local church that we need to continue to stand up for the, for the teaching and the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and those uh, false teachers that's out there, you know, we use scripture to, to bring the light, shine light in those dark areas that they are teaching. Uh, we pray, oh God, and we pray, continue to pray that as we study God's word, we apply God's word to our lives, amen, and the more we uh, know, the more we grow. Amen. The more weapons we have in our weaponry to fight against the wells of the devil. And from that, we want to stay which in line in, in that study of last week. And we're going to continue to study about the faith. Tonight, we're going to talk, we're going to stay along the same theme. We're going to deal with faith again tonight. And we're going to teach about uh, being faith driven. Being faith driven. And we're going to come out of the book of James tonight. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Mm -hmm. James uh, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 8. Perhaps we can get on some things that maybe you have been studying before, probably didn't see it, and we are asking the Holy Spirit, He would reveal some things to us because God's Word is a living Word. And every time we read it and study, we find and we discover and reveal to us something new. And so in chapter 1 of James, it reads James and a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. He said, greetings. Mm -hmm. He said, my brother counted all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying, the trying of your faith work is patient. He said, but let patience have her perfect works, that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Mm -hmm. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and unbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing waver, wavering, but he that waver is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and we're in right there. And I'm going to take my thought from that sixth verse where it says, but he said, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Mm -hmm. Well, he that wavered is like a wave 
of sea driven with the wind and tossed. And this is what we come up with the being uh, faith driven. Mm -hmm. Faith driven. Amen. Amen. Faith driven means that we that we shall, we're going to walk, we shall walk or live by faith and not by sight. Amen. In other words, we don't allow what we see to drive us away from God's plan and purpose of our life. We don't allow what we see happening around us to cause us to fear. Mm -hmm. We walk by faith. We live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in, in order to qualify that, I want you to look at a, a quick scripture coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. I want you to look very carefully, carefully at it. And, and notice what he is saying, what, what Paul is saying. He said, all things and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That, that, it, that it well actually I wanted to go further. I don't know why I just give you just 18 verse. It should have been it should have been uh, things that we see. It should be why we look not on the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I think that will probably be let me look that up right quick. Would that be 2 Corinthians 5, 18? Mm -hmm. I should have should have proofread that before I sent that to you. Did you want 18 and 19? Yeah, what, what 19 said? No. Uh -huh. Place, but I'm not going to lose my thought. Okay. All right. In other words, Paul is saying, uh, he said, we, we don't look at things that are safe. Right. In other words, the things that we, we see every day is just temporal. Yeah. All right. But the things that we do not see is eternal. Amen. In other words, our perception, our perception that we have is natural. But we should have a spiritual perception of this. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You first. It's what? Uh, chapter, uh, it's first chapter first. four, verse eighteen. Chapter four. Mm -hmm. Verse eighteen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, brother. Chapter four. Read that again for me, brother. He said, "While we look not at the things which are seen, okay, but at the things which are not seen." Yeah, yeah. But the things which are seen are temporal. Yeah, yeah. But the things which are not seen are eternal. All right. Amen. Right. In other words, what I'm what I'm trying to get you to understand is because because we are we are uh, driven by faith, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the things that we see, because we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. If we walk by faith, then we trust we trust it in the Lord. And He said, everything that we see in this world is temporal. Amen. It's going to fade away. Yeah. Amen. And every circumstances and every situation that we find ourselves in is only temporal. If we look at it from that perspective, a lot of times we don't look at the circumstances or the situation that we find ourselves in. You, we don't look at it as being temporal right. because we are engulfed in it. And when you're engulfed in pain and hardship and all different types of things, you don't think about how long it's going to last. You just want that thing to, to end quickly. But we have to look at it from a from a perspective, a spiritual perspective, and know that these things are temporal. But, but everything of God is eternal. And we and we and we and it makes a difference when we know that God is always in control. Alright? So so being faith driven mm -hmm. means that we're gonna encounter some things on a daily basis. We're gonna be confronted with things on a daily basis. Amen. And so, but we can't look at them as though these things are going to be permanent. We look at these things that are addressing us or attacking us or the hardship that have come against us. We look at them and say, this is just temporary. Mm -hmm. right? I don't have to stay here long. I don't, I don't have to uh, uh, be involved in this for a long, long time. Amen. I'm not saying, 
I'm not saying that you ignore what's going on in your life. Right? If, if you sick, do something about it. Right, right. You see? If, if, if you if you find yourself in debt, do something about it. You see? Don't ignore it. Amen. What's happening around you, but by faith, you trust God to pull you out of it. So yeah. being faith driven, we always continue to, to look to the hills and come in our help and know that our help truly come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. In this in this text, we're coming out of the book of James tonight, Brother McCauley, and we deal dealing with being faith driven. In other words, we're walking by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. and, and James here is the, is the, is the half brother of, of Jesus mm -hmm. because he has a different father. Right, Joseph is his father. Yes, but but Jesus has a heavenly father. Right, so he's a half. He's a half brother. Right, because uh, Mary wasn't was not conceived yeah. by my natural man. Yeah, conceived by the Holy Spirit. So he's the half brother, and, and he doesn't show up. He doesn't show up until the end of Jesus' life. You don't see him. Uh, you don't see James actually being involved with Jesus doing his ministry, but we see him coming to life or coming into the ministry after Jesus had rose, risen from the dead. <laughs> he doesn't even he doesn't even consider himself the brother of Jesus because most times when people write letters, they identify themselves who they are. And in this in this text in verse one, he, James identified himself as a servant of God. And, and, and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, even though he's the half-brother of Jesus, he's a servant of Jesus Christ. Right? He doesn't look, he doesn't look at his relationship with Jesus as, as, a, as a benefit. He's looking at him as a servant. So he sees Jesus as the Son of God. He said, and also he writes to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. He, he said he greet them. Actually, he's talking in, uh, in terms of the Jews that have, that have converted over to Christianity. Mm -hmm. See, he's writing this letter to the Jews that have converted over to Christianity. And they were all part of the tribe that had been scattered. And so he's writing this letter to them. But notice what he says in the second verse. In the second verse, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation." And that's interesting because the first time that I looked at that and, and studied that, I looked at temptation and some things that are happening to us. But this temptation here, he's talking in terms of, he using temptation as, as, as a way to tempt you, amen, to, to move away from the joy of the Lord. Amen. Hardship. Uh, not only hardship, but circumstances. They are to tempt you Amen. To move you from standing or exercising your faith with the Lord. And we'll get we we'll get into that a little bit a little bit deeper than that. Because it's he's talking in terms of uh of when I first read it, I first caught it, I looked at being tempted to do something. But he says, count it all joy when you fall into different divers. Temptation. And so temp the, 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 the enemy is tempting you with hardship and pain, right. circumstances, sicknesses, all take deep account of things, drive you away from, from your joy in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe when our faith has been tested under a strange condition and we endure the test, right. we endure the test, I believe our life of faith brings praises and honor to God. I, I really do. This is what Paul says in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. I think I got that one right. He said, look, look what he said. He said, that the trials of your faith being much more precious than a gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. Then he said, your faith is much, much more precious that gold that's been tried in the fire. One of the things you understand, when gold is tried in the fire, when it's melted, it still come out, it's still gold. Right? You have a block of gold, 
Blood gold, when you melt it, it's going to come out liquid gold. He said, but here's the thing. He said, might be. So, in other words, he's saying the trying of your faith might be that it should be found unto the praises and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. You catch that? So, so in, in other words, when our life, if, we, if our life have been tested during the hardships and the things of this world, amen, and you still have endured it, you haven't walked away, throw your hands up, say, I ain't doing this no more, I ain't, ain't worshiping no more, this ain't for me, and you hung in there to death, your, your, your faith is found to be bring praises and honor and glory to the appearing of Jesus Christ. Your faith, your enduring, brings, brings glory and honor to God. And one of the reasons why that happened is because people see your life. People see the things that actually happen to you, especially your immediate family. See what the things that you're going through. And they question, you know, how is it that you can still do what you do? Have you ever had seen somebody or heard of somebody when they have some problems in their life and they just go to work? And they say, how do you, you, come, you come to work when you, you should be at home, you know? And they say, well, I, I got to go to work to try to, try to keep, get that off their minds. You know? In other words, what, what, what we, we do, we don't allow the trials and the circumstances that has invaded our life to get us down when we stop functioning as a human being. We stop functioning, doing the things that we customarily do every day. We got to keep on moving. We can't got to keep on moving. We can't we can't allow those things to, to get us down. So so when when trials and when the devil's temptation come our way, we actually saying that our we have to say that our joy in the midst of trials will be a powerful witness. We still got joy. That's what I think. That's what you were saying, Johnny. Sunday, I still have joy. Yeah. After all the things that you've been through, you still have joy. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful witness to the world. Yes, sir. Because the author and the finisher of your faith have all things in control. When you know he, Jesus has all things in control. Mm -hmm. One of the things you got to understand, trials and tribulation doesn't come to destroy you. It, it's come to make you strong. Yes, sir. Right. It, yeah. it, it not only does it, not, it not only does it come so that you might be able to endure, but it's also to it also to perfect your faith, so that your faith can be strengthened. Right. And this, when you pray, Lord, give me more faith. You're asking for the Lord to send trials your way, so that your faith can be strengthened. Right. So now notice what he says, and, and this is the things that I I discovered while I studied this this time around. Notice what he says in verse three: knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. Knowing this is an indicator that when God allowed trial to come your way, that it's coming it's coming to you. As a positive and not a negative. Yes. All right. So, in other words, let me give you an example. All is well, everything going is hokey dokey, as we say. Everything you do seems like it's lining up. Then, all of a sudden, the, the roof just falls in, or the floor just caved in upon you. Mm -hmm. right. And then you wonder, man, what the heck? Going on, you might say something else, but you say, what the heck going, going on? Right? See, now you understand, you, now you in this place where you understand something is happening, have invaded my comfort zone, this peaceful thing that I have, the things that I've been doing, it's working out for me. Now all of a sudden, this, this trial come, come my way. It's to test to see whether or not you're going to be strong. Amen. And then you, what you got to know, God has allowed it to happen. Right. See, he, he allowed things to happen, not to destroy you, 
but also to the strength. Does that, that make any sense to you? Yes, Again, we're talking about what? Being faith driven. Being faith driven. <laughs> Amen? Because our faith is going to be tested. It's going to be tested every day. It's, and again, when our faith has been tested on the string condition and we endure the test, we bring glory and honor to God. Right? Let me give you a, a quick example of that in, in Job. In the, in the book of Job, chapter 1, it starts out and says, And the sons of God came and stood before God. And it says, and Satan too. Mm -hmm. Right? And then and, he, and God asked Satan, where are you coming from? And let me just say it in my way. Right. He said, where are you coming from? He said, I'm going to and fro. See who I may destroy. Right? Then he puts, he puts Job in the stream middle of the situation. He said, have you considered my servant Job? And what did Satan say? Yes, I've seen him. Mm -hmm. I consider him. I can't get to him because he's got a head all around. You follow what I'm saying? So here it is. Here it is. God allowing Satan, right, mm -hmm. to, to, to bring habit on Job. He put Job in the middle of the situation. So he said, you move the hedge around him. He said, I'll, I'll make him curse you to your face. He said, well, he said, I'm going to move the hedge. He said, you can touch everything he got, but you can't touch his body. He took everything he had. Everything he had. And the, and the scripture just fall one after another. Things that he had. He was a wealthy man. Everything yeah. he had, he began to lose. Everything to lose. Even his children. Right? And Job said, Job never cursed God. He never cursed God. But then, then Satan wasn't satisfied with that. Satan says, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he probably strong because, you know, he got some things, but if I touch his body, he said, e even, even, even the strongest man will fall if you touch his body. Mm -hmm. He said, well, okay. He said, why do you keep trying me? Why do you keep bragging? Why do you keep trying me? Don't you know he, he shoot evil? He said, well, if I touch his body, he curse you. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you can tell. He gave him permission to touch his body, but he could not kill him. Mm -hmm. you, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm saying all that to let you know that sometimes God allows trials to invade our peaceful tranquility, the things that we got going on, right? To, to bring to us a point that, that our faith can endure all kinds of trials that we're faced with. Amen? Amen. It, 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 we, we know, we, see, we know, we know faith as the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of faith not saved. Right. This, 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 this is the definition we, we know faith is. And we say it like that. Now faith is mm -hmm. the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of not, things not saved. Mm -hmm. And we, we say it, but do we really believe it? Do we really trust in what the scripture says about faith? Because the word now is in Hebrews, it now is not in the original text. It said in the original text, now is not there. Faith is there. So faith, faith is an action word, and it's a right now kind of word. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope without faith is nothing. Because faith, faith is the very substance of the things that we're actually hoping for. Faith, faith brings from our, do what our natural perception cannot do. Faith, faith brings what's in the spirit world into the natural world that we have. Right? We can't see it, but faith brings those things because it is the substance, the very thing that we're expecting God to do for us. It becomes the evidence the very evidence of the things you actually depending on God for. Yeah. Because you can't see it. You, you understand what I'm saying? 
You can't see it. But you, by faith, you believe it can, it can exist and it can happen for you. That's why you trust him. You, you understand what I'm saying? So we, we, we don't utilize faith to its full potential, all right, until we get to the point where we are, our backs up against the wall, and then we utilize our faith in the way, but we, our faith has been tested all along. From the time we come into the, of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and the time we come in at bay, our faith begins to be tested as we walk with Christ. Amen. It should, it should come to the point where we have been tested and tried and endured situation, hardship after another, and to the point where now that now the situation comes in our life, we are so strong that we don't fall out. Now we just trust God because we know these things are temporary. Yeah. So, so faith is the very thing, right, about what we expect in God to do for us. It's the evidence. We can't see it from the natural perspective, but from the spiritual perspective, we know that God can do all things. Right? But fail. Amen. You had a question? All things but fail. So we have to utilize. So faith becomes the ingredients that substantiate what we are hoping for because hope by itself is empty. And it is the evidence of things not seen. I'm making any sense to you. Mm -hmm. So go back to verse 3. And he's writing, James writing this letter. And when he writes this letter, he's, he's writing in verse 3, he said, knowing this. And he's actually, he's writing to brethren. He's writing to those who accept Christ as Savior. Right. He's writing to 12 tribes that scattered. Mm -hmm. So they are Christian Jews who have accepted Christianity as their faith. So he says, knowing this, in other words, he's saying, God do not try you just to try to destroy you or these things that you have found yourself in, it just not just did happen, right? He said, these things are happening that your faith may be tried. And God is trying to bring your faith to a place. And that's, that place is patience. And you heard my story. Now, I'm still in the classrooms of patience. Like I'm, I'm, the, I'm probably the oldest student in the classroom when it comes to patience. Right. I'm looking for my certificate. Probably won't get my certificate till I stand before him. <laughs> right. But it's his, but it's work, he's working something out in us. He, he does not bring trials and tribulation or test our faith or put our faith on trials just from a, from, a, from a standpoint of nothing, he bringing us to something. Just like when we come to Christ, we come in as babies. And we should be growing. As babies, we should be growing. We should be out with a sincere milk. We should be eating meat. Yeah. Right? We, we sh the, the, the family of Washington Hill should be able to handle strong messages of, of God. But, but but we get to the point where strong messages cause them to walk out, you know. And, and, and instead of instead of giving it over to the Lord, right? Because I'm, my, the Spirit of God is convicting me of this one thing that I'm not living the life that I that that God called me to live. And, and that's come a point where we have done so many, we have done this thing so long. Right. We don't even, we don't, in our heart's mind, we don't even see those things as being wrong anymore. Mm -hmm. right. It's just second nature to us to do it. We don't look at it being sin or God as being against it anymore. We just do it. Because the preacher keeps telling you, well, you can get forgiveness. So, so I'm going to go out there and keep doing it. I get, get, get forgiveness, I'm going to keep doing it. But listen, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is to turn life. Amen. So th there's a consequence behind the actions that you, that you do. Yeah, there's a, a consequence behind that. Right? So, so 
So faith will bring to pass that with our natural eye cannot see. Right? Because we are, we're trusting the Lord for what? And when God is tempting us or trying us, he's trying to bring us to a point of endurance mm -hmm. or, or patience. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense to you? Yes, sir. Again, he's writing to he right into the twelve tribes which are scattered in verse one. And then he says he says he telling them to count it all joy. Don't fall out. Count it all joy. In other words, he's saying if if, if, it, if trials are coming your way, he has considered you to be able to handle the trials that are coming your way. You, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people don't never volunteer for anything. You know, they, they have to just situation just have to come upon them. But it, but this but he says, count it all joy when divers temptation, when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this that the trial of your faith work is patience. He doesn't leave you there in patience. That's, he don't do not leave you there in patience because you have to get to another point from patience. Right? He said, no, he said, but let patience. So while 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 I am enduring the, uh, the, the trials that I'm in, he said, let patience have her perfect work. Let, let, the, let the endurance power that I'm, I'm, I'm putting you through or have, have anointed you with, let it do its work. If you let patience do it, if you just be still and allow the Lord. To give you this endurance, he said, you you come to a place of perfect and entire wanting nothing. Mm -hmm. You you won't have to be tried as much anymore because you have endured the trial. You have you have not, you haven't graduated, but you have passed that particular trial. You have come to a place being perfect, entire, wanting nothing. The first time I looked at it, I, the first time I read it, I did it as, as a message. But I, I did it as a message uh, without a lot of substance behind it. Because I didn't put I didn't put any stock on patience. And I didn't put any stock on waiting it out, allowing patience to have her perfect works. I just I just hit patience. You follow what I'm saying? So in other words, like a basketball player in the, in a in the, in, the, in the final game, I didn't, I didn't, I left something on the table because because I should have went to the point where it said that you may be perfect. And so so in other words, he's trying us. He's taking us through situations, allow situations and circumstances come into our life so we can get to that point where we are. We can be perfect in time, wanting nothing. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking to talk, talk, talk important substance or things of that nature, which you need every day. In other words, in other words, I don't have to cry out, Lord, Lord God, help me now. I'm going through and I can't, I can't do it. No, you don't have to at this point here because I've been tried and I know the last time I was in this situation, he showed up for me. So now that I now that I'm in the same situation, circumstances in my life, right? I know he's going to show up because he's a very present help in time of trouble. I'm growing. I'm growing now because I have the word to stand on now. And the word that brought me through the last time, and the word is going to bring me through again now. So my, my total dependency is on the word of God. You, 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 you. I was just, I just didn't even lie, but a lot of times we put stumbling blocks in our own path. Sure. Yeah. You know, because like I say, I say, well, I'm say, I'm gonna use an example of a maybe a sickness or a healing. I want this healing to take place, but then again, I go off to myself and start concentrating on doubt rather than. Trying to be patient yeah. and let this healing process take its course. Yeah, yeah. I want it to happen now. I want it to happen a lot quicker 
That's what timetables say. Yeah. You know, and God be trying to have us to focus on the finishing process yeah. of utilizing our faith. Yeah. But like I said, me as a human, I step in with all this doubt and this neg negative thoughts and everything. And it's just a long drawn out, well, a longer drawn out process. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's from the natural perspective. Right. But from the spiritual, it's going to take place. Right. Now, not, no, only, no. not only that, my brother. Do, do it. Sure for cutting out the pole, I forget it. Do like uh, digging down the sea. Do we, uh, as God said, do we for the learn from, from our stomach and block? Yeah. Or do we for the keep doing? Mm. We for the learn. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. You, yeah. you dress them as stumbling blocks. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know what stumbling blocks are. Oh. Huh? <coughs> what stumbling blocks are. Stumbling blocks are things that impede. Things that what? Name? Impede. Keep you from yeah. going. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you, you find yourself stumbling over it. Yeah. Certain yeah. things. Yeah. If, if that one stumbling block, you keep tripping over that yeah. stumbling block, yeah. there should be a time when you get rid of that stumbling block. Yeah. 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 That's where you that's where you that's where you take that stumbling block and cast that stumbling block yeah. at, at his feet. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he cares for you. The very thing that's keeping you from from doing Doing right, let's say mm -hmm. doing right. All right. Every time you try to do right or try to do something good, right, this one little stumbling block keep you from doing it. All right. In, in my world, in, in my world, my stumbling block was my buddies. Mm -hmm. That was mine. They were always call me on a certain time. Payday. Because they were my friends, I felt committed to hang out with them. I don't know. That, that's me. This is mine. Go home to the missus. You give her a portion of the check. Yeah. Right? Hit it out with my buddies. You know, because if I didn't show up, they're going to say something. Man, you henpeg, you ain't coming out, all of that. You know, they, you know, so I didn't want to fall in that category. Right. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when the Lord really started dealing with me, I mean, really dealing with me, opened my eyes to to my friends being my stumbling block. Mm -hmm. I was able to cut them away. Mm -hmm. yeah. They they no longer had a hold on me or influence over me. To hang out with them, I was able to get through the weekend with with, with a little money in my pocket. I had a little money in my pocket come Monday, you know, to buy my cigarettes or you know buy my food on the job. Stumbling blocks come in different ways, but you don't have to. You have to be you have to be spiritual enough to give it give it to the Lord. That's why he said, cast all your cares upon him, God, for he cares for you. Right? Is that making sense to you? Yes, sir. All right. In this particular, in this particular, when we look at verse 4, he, he's, he's bringing us from patience. And he said to uh, he said to the Christian at the scout, he said, let, let patience have her perfect work. Let patience do for you what you can't do for yourself. And when, if you allow patience to, to, to fully blossom in you, he said, you're going to come out the, come out through it perfect. And in time, wanting nothing. In other words, you might not have to go through that particular trial no more because you passed that particular test. But now, just in case, you still at a place where you you don't know why things are happening the way they're happening, right? 
in, 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 in you. Because we say, some people have you believe it, it's not okay to ask God why, but he's just, he's your heavenly father. You can always ask him why. You see, we say, we, preachers say, why not you? But, it's, but he's your father. You got a relationship with him. This is why he said in verse 5, he said, if any of you lack wisdom, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And he's talking in terms of what you're going through. Amen. You don't understand why you've been chosen to go through what you're going through. He said, ask of God. Don't get on the phone and call any of your buddies. He said, you ask God. He said, you ask God. He said, that give it to all men liberty, freely. Mm -hmm. right. it, ain't it ain't so tangled up when you don't understand it. It's going to be clear to you. And it shall be given to you. You, you follow what I'm saying? And this is the part I think we, we stumble as, as believers. We, we stumble with this because we don't ask God. Mm -hmm. We ask other people for advice. Their opinions. Yeah. Their opinion might be their advice can be helpful. I'm, I'm saying that some some advice can be helpful, but in this particular case, because you're under a, a spiritual attack, right. you see, and so you can't use carnal things against something spiritual. Just what he said. Then, then that's what the book of Ephesians said. Mm -hmm. You wrestle not. With flesh and blood, so you so so you 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 under a spiritual attack, you you a spiritual attack us against you, so you ask God, right? So you you ask, you asked Him. He said, "Freely will I partiality, right? He gonna give it to you, and he and so so that you have an understanding of why you're going through." Wisdom, this this wisdom, wisdom that we have is is is, is to know how to utilize the information of the revelation that you got. You, you can have understanding, but if you ain't got wisdom to understand the revelation or the information that you got, how to utilize it, how to use it in a way that's best suits you. Believers ask or pray to God for wisdom of knowing. Of how the things they want to do, but at the same time, when they ask, they waver. They pray. The, the, the word ask me is another word for pray to God for the wisdom of knowing, but they waver in, when they ask God. You, you see what I'm saying? The, verse 6 he said, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, but he that waver is like a wave of sea driven. With the wind and talks. So in other words, he said in verse 5, when you ask, you ask God for, for the revelation of knowledge of what, what's going on with you. And God, he said, God gonna actually give it to you. He's gonna freely give it to you. He said, but when you when you pray and ask him, don't doubt. Don't doubt that whether or not he hear you or not. Always, always know that he hears you. He hears you. He never take no time off. His phone line is never busy. You ain't got to do no long, outstretched out prayer. It's just because you, you you got a telephone in your bosom, as we say in church. You got a, you got a, 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 a connection with him, a spiritual connection with the Father. Mm -hmm. So 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 at the end of that, what it says is that that way was like a wave of the sea driven. So what comes uh, what comes what comes about with that with the winds and talks? I mean what what's the end of that? Because you're not in other words, you, you doubt it. Right, you doubt it. You 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 doubt it whether or not he heard you when you pray. Right. And so so when wind, he uses the wind as a reference that you you toss between yes he's gonna answer my prayer. Mm -hmm. I don't no, I don't believe you on ask my prayer. Girl, I just, man, man, I just call, man, I just been praying, man, you know, you sir. So you doubt it. So is the end of the doubt is no? No. He's, 
He, yeah, he says in verse 7, he says, let that man think that he had nothing. Let that man think that he shall receive anything. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doubt ruling out there. Doubt ruling out what, what you're asking God for. Oh, so you, uh, so you saying? I'm not saying the scripture. Saying I'm, I'm gonna just, just. Go ahead. Well, you don't have to doubt God, do you? You shouldn't doubt Him. Oh, okay, that's all I need. Yeah, yeah. Right. There, there are there are occasions where you where people do. Do what, Pastor? There are occasions where people do doubt. Doubt is common. It's a common thing. Did John the Baptist ask the question? Yeah. yeah. When he sent his disciples to Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Are you the one? Yeah. Or should we look for another? Mm -hmm. He was locked up in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Strong preachers, man. Yeah. Strong, Strong preachers. preachers. But 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 when the environment, the, the when the environment he was in, uh -huh. the situation changed where we were in. Right. And, and his cousin, Jesus, didn't come and, 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 and bail him out. Mm -hmm. and, and he was on the verge of losing his head. Yeah. He tells his disciples, go ask him. Sure is. is he the one? Yeah. And what did Jesus say to him? Yeah. Yeah. Go show him. Now, that's interesting because he didn't change anything. He wasn't released. Still, he was still like. Yeah. But it's changed his mindset. Now, you see what I'm saying? I, I believe that at this point, he's ready now. Because he knows he's going to decrease while Christ Jesus is going to increase. And I think the scripture actually show that. That, that, the, that the ministry of Jesus began to increase. Because it's talking more about Jesus than John. Is that so doubt, doubt, doubt. It's a common thing that happens. Especially, especially when I'm working on parts. If I got a package in and I got to put that bad one together, <laughs> I don't open that box with confidence. I'm looking, somebody says something, he says, men don't look at instruction, but yeah, I do. I'm one man looking at instruction. Right? So, so, so the scripture says you can't have faith doubt at the same time. No one. No, it really you say that. No. Right. In, in this particular, he says, let him to ask. And the word, this asking is actually praying. Mm -hmm. Praying in faith. The doubt answer was well, faith. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, go to Hebrews 11 and 6. Look what he said. He said, but without faith it is impossible to please him. He, he, he is pleased when you exercise your faith in him. Not doubt. His faith. Your faith in him. He's pleased. All right? And then, then, he, then he qualified it. He said, for he that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So, so basically, it's a lot of people not being healed because of their doubts. Yeah, I would say, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, well, you can cancel it out, you know. It's like, you, it's like a, a unbelief. It is unbelief. You know, it, 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 that's a fine line. Because, because, because it might not be in God's will. Right, yeah. right, right. But I, I know what I'm praying for, and that that that's what I was praying on right there. Yeah. Yeah, it might not be in God's will. Yeah. I, I, I think about that. Yeah, there's some preachers. There's some preachers yeah. to tell you that, that that you know because of His strike you're healed, and, and you can have that faith as a grain of mustard seed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to believe it, but if it's not in God's will mm -hmm. for you to be healed, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to happen. So it basically, mm -hmm. just 
keep the faith. Just keep the faith. You're going to be faithful till death. Right. And that's a fine line. You know, that's a fine yeah. line. Yeah. But you want to have faith. and you, you have the faith. And you trust the Lord for that. I, what's difficult for believers is, is that many don't practice faith in the part of healing. Because because they they resort to other things for relief. You, you follow what I'm saying? So if, if I got a if I if I got a headache, I'm grabbing an aspirin. I am I'm not saying by faith I believe this headache's gonna leave. The first thing I'm doing is grab a Tylenol or something and boom. We don't practice it. So, so, so our faith is weak in the healing area, and, and our faith is strong in other areas. When, when don't get me wrong, the people that view me, I believe by faith you can be healed because the scripture says, "By His strife you are healed." Because we don't utilize our faith in the healing area of our lives. It's, it's a little bit more difficult for us to kind of focus, be strong in faith as for us the healing for our bodies. You make any sense to you? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, you know, if, you, if you're dealing with somebody and, you know, they pray for a healing and, and it don't come, but they got faith, you say, well, they just want God's will for you to be healed. You know, want to just, just move on to you. The next one, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, that's that's what we say. That's what we say, and it's a fine line because again, again, you gotta understand. This is what I'm saying. We don't utilize our faith in the healing area for our lives. We use our faith for all everything else. I'm, I'm trusting God for that job, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trusting God, you know. I'm trusting God for this. I'm trusting Him by faith for this and that. Mm -hmm. But but when it comes to my physical health, I'm not trusting Him by faith for that. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the scripture says something like, uh, "If you sit call on the elders, you know a lot of people don't call you and say, hey, come pray for me. I'm sick.' They yeah. say, brother, go to the doctor. They get like say, take the pills. Yeah, because we not we not utilize the scripture." We not do our description, but then you got to understand the, the the elders here. Those elders here, and he's talking in terms of the elders of the church. Is is in is in a is in a higher position. They're not just they're not just deacons. Right, I'm talking about pastors. Yeah. yeah. You, you follow what I'm saying? Right. But here they they he say call. He says he tells them to call the elders. See, you gotta do your part. If, if man, woman have to do their part in the calling. And believing. See, if I'm calling, I'm believing if I call the elders to come and pray for me, yep. right? They're gonna come and lay hands on me, not my hear the Lord. And also it says, and the scripture said also, if if my sin, if I'm sin, it shall be forgiven. So, so that I, I'm connecting the two together because it, right. perhaps I'm sick because I've been some sin, mm -hmm. some things that I've done. I think a lot of people miss that too. Yeah. They might be sick for their past sin. A lot of sin is what they're doing now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you you got the whole you got the whole scripture there. You can't just take take one part out of it out. You got to take the whole part out. And then a lot of times in the local church, reason why they don't utilize, they probably don't have that confidence in the in the elders or the or the, the deacon ministry. When they, when they say elders, that's not the deacon elders. No. No, that's the pastors. The churches have elders that actually elders who is is the is actually the the, the bosses, the strong bosses of the church. 
They, 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 they hold more authority than the pastor. And the, but, but now in many churches, they, they, they put in the label on the elders. You know, they, they, take the, they take that labor, elder, elder so-and-so, elder so-and-so. They take it in the label of elders. But they're not in, in operation. Uh, but again, at the end of that, we're saying, and that he be of the reward of them that diligently seek him. Yeah. And a lot of people not really seeking the Lord. You know, they really, they're just not. That's earnestly, and that's what he says. He said, "You got to believe." See, once I'm, the person coming to the Lord, he says, "He said, he says, it's impossible to please. This impossible. It's by faith. It's impossible to please God." How did how did it go? Go back. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It, so that just ruled out every everything else, because in order for me to please Him. I have to constantly utilize my faith. He's pleased when I'm trusting him to the point, all right, with no doubt that he's going to work everything out. I'm not, I'm not listening to the naysayers. I'm not listening to anything else. Come here, Peter. What did, what did Peter ask God? Ask Jesus when he seen Jesus walking on the water. Bid me to come. Bid me to come. And what did Jesus say? Come. Come. And Peter stepped out of the boat and actually walked on the water. Mm -hmm. But as he started walking, he started, he started looking and listening to the blistering rain, the storm. He took his eyes off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible said he began to sing. Well, when, it, when it said seek, you know, that put another dimension on it. You know, it's you gotta have faith. You gotta be seeking. You gotta be you. You seeking them by faith. You gotta be coming to Bible study. You gotta be trying to get to know God. Yeah. It ain't like you know, yeah. You know, people people don't come to church, but they they say they believe in God. But are you seeking God? Yeah. Well, you you seeking Him by faith. Right. You tie the two together. Faith, faith without works is dead. Right. You know, vice versa. Yeah. So they have to go hand in hand. Well, you, well, in other words, you're seeking God by faith. Coming to coming to church it is coming coming to church is not coming to church. It's coming to worship. Right. Well, well, that's what they, I'm they, about to seek. They they don't. This when I'm when I'm kind of clarify okay. that when people not coming to to church, as we say it, they they are denying giving God worship. Right? They denied him. Right? Worship. That's what they're doing. They, they're not denying washing the heels of their finances. They're denying God his due worship of them. Right. Well, what, 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 right. That's what I'm saying. saying. When I say seek, yeah. how do you seek God? In faith, but in prayer. In prayer? Yeah. No, in prayer. I mean, you, you, to seek him, you got to get to know him. Right. Well, if you don't, you won't seek him. You got a first one, yes. You got that great. You know, I mean, you, we you yeah. can run around all day talking about I love God, but I don't know. I'm mean, not from the church. I don't go to Bible study. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm at home. Yeah. How is that seeking God? Well, if if you're dealing with a person who's you talking to or saying that, then you can actually say you're not seeking him. You're not worshiping him. Right. You're I'm not seeking him saying. to to have in your life. You're not seeking to have a relationship. You gotta have something on the end. What you are you seeking God to have a relationship with him? You see. And then from the evidence of what you should describe, they're not seeking a relationship with him. Right. Yeah. They might seek him for what they can get out of him, but they're not seeking a relationship. And that's, that's many people that I have met, what? they're not a member of no local church, but when you ask them, they'll tell you, the first thing they say, I, I, I go to church. I believe in God. Right. The, the devil believed in God. That's what the scripture said. Demons believe 
but they trembled at the name of Jesus. You see, and so it's, it's easy to say what they what they do, but it's it's another thing whether or not they act active in a local church. You see, you got to do something. Yeah, you you you, you yeah, you're looking, searching, but what you're seeking them for. That's the point. If if they're not if they're not doing it, if they're not committed to anywhere or doing anything, or them not committed to local church, they're not seeking him for anything. They depended on themselves for everything that they are actually have. They they are dependent on self rather than depending on God. Right, that's what we fall short by not seeking that way. You, you don't get the scripture. You don't get understanding. I, I, I won't use we. I'm using I mean, they. I'm, I'm talking about. I'm not talking about. Well, in general, yeah. people don't don't they don't get the word. They don't get the relationship. They don't get to understand what God can do. Yeah. If you seek Him and trust Him and have faith in Him. Right. right. But seeking is a is a continuous. Continuing process. You don't just get to the point where you can say, Well, I seek God or I know God. Because you're continually trying to know Him. Yeah. That's and it's, 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 it's that daily walk. Yeah. Yeah. Continuous daily walk. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's what seeking Seeking is seeking Him for something, or seeking for a relationship. You know? And if they're not, if they're not committed anywhere, to a local church or or anything of that nature, so they're really they are not really worshiping God. They now have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, because they let you know they ain't seeking. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got people come to church and not commit. You know, they come one week, might not see for a month. They might come, you know, that's not committed. Right. They, well. Then we're talking in terms of committed to the local church. Right. Being committed to the local church has nothing to do with their salvation. Right. There, there, I believe there's benefits that comes out of being committed to the local church. You know, and that, that comes from growing and, and receiving nourishment from, from the word of God. And, and, and actually, their life can be improved because they are what well, they're giving up some of their time to come to worship God. Yeah. You didn't, it could be you. You after it could be the reason why they're not for alone financially or spiritually because they haven't put Him first. And he's on the back burner. He's getting what leftovers. <laughs> But those are things. That, but, but when you did, when you actually talking to somebody who's who's far removed from commitment or committed to a local church, you you have to you have to talk in terms to them to try to help them understand the benefit and the necessity for them to be committed to a local church. We have some that who have re rededicated their life to Christ. They was on a high on that day. But after that day, you know, it seemed like they were out. You see? They, they gave lip service, but not a heart service. Amen. And, and I think scripture actually says something that you worship me with your lips. You honor me with your lips. But your heart is far from me. Yeah, but your heart is far from me. And, but when we keep doing our thing, we keep we, we stay committed to the local church. We keep praying for them, right? And, and because it, it, but it, and when they stand before Him, God, who is going to be a righteous judge, they are the ones that have to give an account. Seeking him for wisdom. Yeah. You're not seeking him for any understanding of, 
the things that happen around you. Amen. You're not seeking him for strength so that you can endure the course of the day. Amen. But do we have the power as being a fluster, a fluster in person to criticize them because they are like this? Do we have the power? Do we? Do we have the power to criticize or uncritical? Um, there's another word it should be. Uh, we yeah. ain't criticizing them. We're going to be praying for them. Talk about yeah. judging. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't the power. It's not the power. We don't have the right to do that. That's the word. Right. Oh, oh. Yeah. We need to pray for it. It's weak in the face. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
how significant our faith is. In this one scripture, I think I got my close with this, and I'm sorry that I'm all over, over going. In the first John 5 and 4, look what he said. He said, Whosoever is born of God will overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Look what he said. Even our faith. That's how powerful your faith is. The scripture says he gave every man a measure of faith. Yeah. If you use that measure, you know, to bring to pass those things you desire God to do for us. You have not because you have not asked. But when you ask, you gotta have ask with your faith. Amen. 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 Break, break that down the first time. She can put that first thing in the back up there. Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Break that down. Yeah, yeah. Look, look what it said. Born of God. When born again? Yeah. We talked about it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcome the world, though, if if it talks about overcomes the world. You uh, you have get, been given dunamis power to be overcomers. That's oh, what he's okay. actually saying. Okay. He's, you you get you overcomers because you got dunamis power inside of you. Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. So because we're born again, born yeah. into the family of Jesus Christ, yeah. we've been given dunamis power. We overcome the world. But here's the what we what what we use to overcome the world. Right. We use faith. faith. This is what it said. This is the victory oh. that overcomes the world, even mm -hmm. our faith. Mm -hmm. So we 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 over, we already overcomers, yeah, but because we live in a in a mean world, yeah. we gotta have a weapon that we use. So, so when, I, when they say overcomers of the world, is, is that saying uh, our trials and our tribulations? Yes. Yeah. Whatever in the world, yeah. We in the world, but we not of the world. I think it's something like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. In this world, you will have all kinds of tribulations. He said, "Ain't gonna be too pretty bright." He said, "But be of good cheer." But because I have what I've overcome the world. So because because I because we all are in Jesus, right? We're born again into the family. Yeah. Right. We be we in good cheer. Uh -huh. That's why he says, count it all joy when doubt's temptation come. And no doubt's temptation, hardship, pain, whatever, physical things, whatever, sickness, whatever come. Don't lose your joy. That's what my man son Sunday. I still have joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joy is a powerful weapon. I think Nehemiah says something, the strength of the 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 strength of the Lord, the Lord is my strength. Joy, what is it? The joy of the Lord is my strength. You know God. You know God. All right. The joy of the Lord is what? My strength. All right. All right. Keep praying. First Sunday, those that are doing us by Facebook, we welcome you to come be with us come Sunday. Amen. As we partake in the Lord's Supper, we love to have you here. Amen. As we partake. Amen. Amen. And we keep praying for us, and we're certainly going to be praying for you. Father, we thank you for this time of study. We pray, oh God, that the words that we have taught tonight have thank fallen you. on further ground. Lord God, we rebuke the enemy that comes and snatch that which has been planted in our heart. Lord God, we walk by faith and not by sight. We love you and we thank you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.